Access your free language gifts right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Making Mistakes Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to respond to mistakes in conversations? This brand new cheat sheet teaches you all the must-know phrases for correcting others and asking for corrections. Download it for free right now. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and much more. Third, the Shops Around the City vocabulary lesson. Learn how to say mall, supermarket, restaurant, bakery, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, do you know how to express holiday greetings in your target language? Access this one-minute lesson to learn phrases like Happy Holidays and Have a Happy New Year. Fifth, must know winter clothing vocabulary. Do you know how to say jacket or scarf in your target language? If you don't, this next one-minute lesson will give you all the words you need for winter clothing. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 51% off all basic premium and premium plus plans with our special Black Friday deal. To get your gifts in language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to deal with missed language goals and failure. Have you ever failed to reach a goal? If you're planning on learning a language as your 2021 New Year's resolution, or if you just want to know how to get back up and recover from language learning failure, then you'll like this episode. So keep watching. But first, here are this month's new free lessons and resources. First, the Making Mistakes Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to respond to mistakes in conversations? This brand new cheat sheet will teach you all the must know phrases for correcting others and asking for corrections. Download it for free right now. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and much more. Third, the Shops Around the City vocab lesson. Learn how to say mall, supermarket, restaurant, bakery, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, do you know how to express holiday greetings in your target language? Access this one minute lesson to learn phrases like happy holidays and have a happy new year. Fifth, must know winter clothing vocab. Do you know how to say jacket or scarf in your target language? If you don't, then this next one minute lesson will give you all the words you need for winter clothing. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to deal with missed language goals and failure. If you've ever set a goal, you've probably dealt with failure. A lot of people set goals around January when they set their New Year's resolutions. If you're planning on setting a resolution to learn a new language in 2021, you'll want to pay attention. Now, in this video, when we say failure, we mean you set a goal, but you don't reach it. For example, if the goal was learning 100 words in a month, either you learned some words, meaning you took some steps, or you did nothing at all, meaning you learned zero words. Failure usually happens for one of two reasons. One, you set an unrealistic goal that's too hard for you or your routine or your lifestyle. For example, learning 1,000 words in a month can be overwhelming. Or two, it could be for reasons outside of your control. Maybe you got sick, or you're busy at work and have no time, or you're moving. Life can get in the way. So how do you deal with failure? Do you feel disappointed? Do you quit? 
Do you keep trying? Leave us a comment and let us know. But if you want to succeed with your future language goals, you'll need to change your outlook on failure and learn how to recover. So here are five ways to deal with missed goals. One, ask yourself, is this outside of my control or inside of my control? For example, you could be moving, you might have overtime at work, you may get sick, and life might just get in the way. These situations are outside of your control, so there's no need to blame yourself. If they were inside your control, it's likely you set a goal that was too hard or simply unrealistic for your current lifestyle. Why ask this? If the situation is outside of your control, you should keep on going. If the situation is within your control, you can work on fixing it, and we'll tell you how in just a bit. Second, if you feel disappointed about a missed goal, which is normal, use that feeling as motivation. Don't stop your language learning journey just because you're feeling disappointed. Third, understand that this isn't the last time you're going to fail. There'll be goals that you'll hit and there'll be goals that you miss. That's just a fact of life. And in a way, that's good news because you'll get used to failing. You'll learn not to feel too bad about it and you'll learn how to keep on going. Fourth, understand that as long as you spend time on the language, that's good enough. Goals are also meant to get you moving in a certain direction. So as long as you made some strides in the right direction, that's better than nothing. So if your goal was to learn 100 words, but you learned only 20, 20 is better than zero. You still started moving in the right direction. And if you didn't reach 100 this time, you can hit 100 in the future. It's just a matter of time. Fifth, recover from failure by setting smaller goals. Why set smaller goals? If you failed to learn 100 words, wouldn't it make sense to try that goal again? Or double up, punish yourself, and learn 200 to make up for lost time? In schools, when we miss homework, we have to make it up and stay on track with new homework. This doesn't make sense with goals. The reason is, if you fail again, it's because that goal is too far out of your reach. Either you yourself can't handle it, or your current situation, like being busy at work or having a private matter, doesn't give you much time. By aiming lower, you can at least get back on track to succeeding at reaching a goal. You're getting something done and you're getting your confidence back up. Because if you couldn't reach 100 words last time, chances are you won't reach it this time. So try 50 words, 30 words. Give yourself a chance to succeed on your own terms. And that's it. Don't let the small failures keep you from making a big success. Make your goals work for you. Let's recap one more time. One, ask yourself, is this outside of my control or inside of my control? Two, if you feel disappointed, use that feeling as motivation. Three, understand that this isn't the last time you're going to fail. Four, understand that as long as you spend time on the language, that's good enough. And five, recover from failure by setting smaller goals. If you're planning on setting a language learning resolution for 2021, let us know what it is. Leave a comment. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to get back on track after language learning failure. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What are the best ways to learn a language on the go? You might be surprised to find there are lots of moments throughout the day we can transform into language learning opportunities. These might be on your commute, during an exercise session, or even just when you're trying to kill some time. In this video, we'll introduce you to three tips for learning on the go. Number one, how to learn a language on the go. Many of us are probably used to studying when we have time to sit down and concentrate. We take out textbooks and notepads and prepare to focus our attention for an hour or so, like in a classroom. It might be hard to think of studying in other settings, like when you're sitting on a bus or are stuck in traffic, but there are still things you can do, even if your hands are full. For example, think about your commute. How much time do you spend traveling to and from work, school, or other activities throughout the week? If you have a one-hour commute every day, that's a lot of time you could be spending working on your language skills. Even if you're not ready to devote your whole commute to study, a little bit every day will help. But how do you study in environments like these? By changing the way you approach your learning. 
These days, many people now have a computer right in their pocket. Smartphones make it easy to access many different kinds of study materials. Depending on our needs and the time we have available, we can watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, study vocabulary, review infographics, and more. There are many different ways to build our language skills, and we can choose study methods that work for our schedules, our personalities, and our goals. There are a lot of different methods to consider. So in part two, we're going to share a few ideas to help you get started. Number two, five easy ways to learn a language on the go. If you're standing on a crowded train, you can't pull out a book or do workbook problems. If you're exercising, it's probably impossible to review textbooks or take notes. If you're driving, you need to make sure you're watching the road. So how do you transform times like these into study opportunities? Situations like these are great for audio and video lessons. We have huge libraries of both, so you can choose whichever is best for you. All you need to study is a smartphone, a lesson, and a pair of earphones. Just press play and watch a video or listen to an audio lesson, like you would with music. During your commute or exercise session, you'll hear a simple conversation focused on a specific goal, like introducing yourself or ordering food. Then, our teachers will explain the words and phrases. In just a few minutes, you'll be working on mastering an entire conversation. Our second study method suggestion is our app, Innovative Language 101. You can download it for free for the iPhone, iPad, and Android. This will allow you to take your lessons with you wherever you go. Study idea three is for those of you who want something super quick and easy. You can use it to kick off your studies each day. It's our word of the day email. Every day, you get an email with a new word, example sentences, audio, and a picture to help make it stick in your mind. If you check your email during your commute, you can also check the word of the day. Our last two study method ideas are about tools that can help you remember what you study. First is our vocab slideshow tool. This study tool is available on all vocab lists and lessons. Just press play and listen to words and phrases one by one. You can even set the slideshow on a loop and listen to the words over and over. Finally, our last suggestion is our smart flashcards. These flashcards use spaced repetition to help you study and remember words, and the cards are mobile friendly. The cards remember your progress and quiz you on words at the right times. This helps ensure you don't forget the things you study. To access these, visit the site on your phone and find the flashcards in the vocabulary menu. Swipe through as you study. Our system will remember your progress. If you get a word wrong, you'll see it more often. The flashcards know to quiz you again and again until you remember that word. Number three, be consistent. If you can find new ways to use your time and work towards your language goals, great. But remember to be consistent. Using all or even part of your commute or your downtime to study can be a fantastic way to make progress, but you need to make sure to do it regularly. Try to build a habit of starting a video lesson as soon as your commute begins, or pressing play on an audio lesson as soon as you begin a jog. Creating these habits will help you stick with your study methods long term and will lead to greater progress. When you decide to learn a language, it's exciting, but there are lots of different ways to approach your studies. What can you do to make sure you start things off in the best way for yourself? In this video, we'll cover six things for you to consider to get you started on the right foot. First, what is your reason for learning? Thinking about your why for studying a language can be so important. If you know why you're doing something, it becomes easier to create goals. There are lots of reasons to learn a language. Travel, family, friends, love, and even the experience of living in a new country. Clarifying your reason for learning helps you define your mission and gives you motivation right from the start. Some reasons for learning may be stronger than others. If you live in a country that speaks the language you need to learn, you're probably highly motivated to study because your progress will directly affect your daily life and relationships. If, however, your reason for learning is something like, I want to be able to watch TV shows in that language, your motivation might not be as high as the person in the first example, but that's okay. Everyone has a different, unique reason for wanting to learn a language. Take some time to understand what you want to get out of your studies. This is a helpful first step. Second, set the right goals. Once you've clarified your reason for learning, it's time to set your goals. Don't make goals like, I want to be fluent one day. This type of goal is problematic because there's no deadline for the goal, no clues about how you'll achieve your goal, and no way of knowing when you've reached fluency. 
Your goals need to be small, measurable, realistic, and have a deadline. Try making monthly goals instead of yearly goals. Saying, I want to be fluent one day, isn't helpful. Instead, make a goal like, be able to speak for one minute by the end of the month. A goal like this gives you a target, a skill to develop, and a deadline. You have one month to practice your speaking skills enough to be able to talk for one minute. You can set a timer and track how long you're able to speak. This is also a realistic goal. Learning enough to speak for one minute in one month is reasonable. You can even think of how you might reward yourself for achieving the goal. Third, reward yourself for achieving your goals. You can determine your rewards when you determine your goals. Rewards are powerful motivators. You should be working consistently towards your goals, but there will undoubtedly be times when the work isn't fun and you need something to push you through. When you come home after a long day of work or school on a rainy day, maybe the last thing you want to do is open a book and start studying. It's so much easier to turn on Netflix or scroll social media, but if you have a reward, you can use it as a motivator. As mentioned before, it's important to remember why you're learning a language and what your goals are. For many people, thinking about the rewards they'll get along the way boosts their motivation. If you give yourself something to look forward to, it can help you get through the times you may not feel like putting in the work. Fourth, match your routine to the study medium. The word routine here refers to your everyday routine. You need to understand your personal schedule and your personality to make a study schedule that's right for you. It may come as a surprise that this is a step where many people fail. They think they can do a lot more than they actually can, get overwhelmed, and quit. In the end, the people who give up after just a few weeks of hard study are only able to do a fraction of what they plan to be able to do. It can be tough to understand your own limitations. We all like to think we're capable of doing anything we put our minds to, at any time, on any day. But the reality is, there will be times when we're tired, bored, or just don't feel like studying. We need to be able to plan for times like these. To do that, we need to understand our own limitations. Try this. Write out your weekly schedule. Where do you have some existing time that you can spend on studies? For example, maybe you have some time on your commute every day, or some time during a lunch break. If you're super busy, like most people, look for places in your day that naturally make sense, instead of trying to create a whole new block of time to devote to your studies. Maybe it's when you visit a cafe, or when you're on the bus or train. See if there's a place where you can match the medium, the learning method, to your existing routine. For example, on your commute in the morning, you can listen to an audio lesson twice a week, or listen once a week after dinner at home while you do chores. Break out some vocabulary flashcards during lunchtime. Maybe you can even find a weekend class. Which brings us to our fifth point. Fifth, anchor points. These are the connections you make to a language that boost your motivation and keep you attached or anchored to your goal. For example, maybe you have friends or relatives that speak the language. And if you're around them and you're exposed to the language, you're more likely to learn. If you don't know anyone who speaks the language, consider making a monetary investment, like a textbook or a learning program. By paying for something, you make a commitment to yourself to use it. Sixth, assessment. It's good to know where you are in your studies and determine if you're making progress. If you're not moving forward, maybe the methods you're using aren't quite right for you. Or maybe you need to find new ways to add studying into your routine to give you more opportunities to learn. But don't do assessments so often that you don't actually have a chance to learn. For example, if you take a test once and get a score you're not happy with, don't immediately take the test again. Give yourself time to study and develop your skills more. Then you can come back and try again. Assessment is a great way to keep yourself on track, but don't let tests take over your studies. In this video, we talked about six things to consider when you start learning a language. Figure out your reason for learning, set good goals, and choose rewards. Have anchor points, and make sure to match your routine with the medium of study. And finally, make sure you have the proper approach to assessment of your progress. What was the last new word or phrase you learned? Do you remember? If you can answer this question, then you're using a very important skill for language learning. It's called active recall. Keep watching to learn more about how powerful it is. In this video, we'll cover the best ways to study and remember. So, what is active recall? Active recall is an important part of learning and actually remembering what you've learned. Essentially, it means forcing yourself to remember what you've learned. For example, 
Let's say you're reading a textbook and you learn a new word like hello. Reading is a passive activity. That word or phrase won't last very long in your memory. But then if you ask yourself later, okay, what was that word again? You're using active recall. It's when you try to remember something without looking at the answer. So what's special about this? Typically, when we study for tests, we read and reread textbooks, take notes, highlight some key points, and reread some more. But with this style of studying, you're still looking at the answers and simply reviewing them, right? It's essential that you also study by forcing yourself to remember. Doing this helps improve your memory. So how do we apply this to language learning? What are some tricks that you can use to actually remember what you study? First, try using quick recall. Let's start simple. Tell us in the comments, what was the last word or phrase you learned in your target language? Second, quiz yourself right after studying. After you finish a lesson, ask yourself, what did I learn in this lesson? Go ahead and write down as much as you can remember. You can also ask yourself, what grammar rule did I learn here? Or what was the conversation? And try and recall the dialogue. Do this for every lesson, but don't look at the answers. The point is to recall as much as you can. Third, take notes from memory. Again, don't look at the answers. There's a note feature in each of our lessons to help you do just that. Fourth, take lesson quizzes. You'll find these in each of our lessons. Actually, taking tests or quizzes is a great way to practice active recall since you're forced to remember just the answers. Fifth, use spaced repetition flashcards to master words and phrases. Spaced repetition flashcards quiz you on words, and you have to mark whether you know them or you don't. If you know the word, you'll see it again in a few days. And if you don't know a word, you can flip the card and get the answer. But you'll get quizzed on it again and again until you get it right. Sixth, do assignments. If you're a Premium Plus user, you get weekly assignments from your teacher. And these test you on listening, reading, speaking, and writing. These are all ways to use active recall throughout your language learning to make sure you remember everything you study. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.